Parola on stage. Uh, he is part of the Cidre team, uh, who developed a tool for program and uh, malware analysis. The talk is called uh, Guy Mimic. This is a cross-platform recorder and further for, uh, of a graphical user interface. So Vincent, the floor is yours. Thank you. So yeah, I work at the CIDA team. I'm, I'm a PhD student at Central Spelec and INRIA. Uh, and uh, I'm presenting you this tool that we can see for our purpose and we, that we want to share. Uh, it is, uh, GUI Mimic is uh, uh, a, f a fuzzing tool that works by interacting with the mouse and keyboard. First of all, I need to explain quickly uh, why we needed that. So, in our study, we focus on uh, malware analysis. This is uh, the a malware is uh, just a, a file or uh, some parts, some code inside of a file that uh, will execute some malicious action. So, when it reaches a certain target infrastructure and execute on it, uh, some of the actions uh, we will study those actions to tell whether or not it's a malware, and more precisely, more interestingly, uh, what is the family, which means what are the kind of actions that it took. More particularly, uh, in our, our approach, uh, we want to do what is called dynamic analysis, which means we want to run those sample files, we want to, to analyze, in a controlled environment, for example, in a virtual machine, but uh, we will monitor them as, we, as they run. And uh, when we think they've executed uh, their actions, we will retrieve some execution trace information to whatever that means, resource uh, performance uh, measurements, uh, system call traces, and uh, we will perform analysis from uh, these traces. Uh, more precisely, we want to have uh, a machine learning approach, which will give us some requirements. First of all, we need to generate a lot, a lot of these execution traces uh, to be able to train our models. Uh, furthermore, we want to be able to uh, do some uh, behavioral analysis, which means we, uh, for particular softwares, which means uh, we need a lot of traces per software to understand their, uh, their behavior. Um, that's why we also need some various data to be sure that we will explore all the possible paths to have the, the largest code coverage of a given software. And finally, for our particular need and some of our models, we want to be able to uh, fuzz some good words, benign software, uh, to, learn from the, to learn their typical behavior. So, in particular, uh, on most cases, the software we want to fuzz uh, will not be designed to interact to a terminal. Instead, they will have a graphical user interface. And that is what uh, we will interact with. The problem is that if we want to generate completely random events uh, with the mouse and keyboard, this is very ineffective, uh, as we could uh, click, for example, on the uh, uh, dead parts of the screen and, for example, lose focus on the software we want to try. So, instead, uh, what we need to do is to create, to learn some rules uh, for the software we actually, we're currently using, uh, telling us what are the active parts of the interface. So, to sum this up, our tool needs to interact through the graphical user interface. Uh, taking con by taking control of the mouse and the keyboard uh, and generate all uh, the necessary events through that. To learn to make uh, coherent actions, we need to record ourselves using the software. And uh, then we will be able to trim uh, these sequences, this recording, uh, create some rules, some logical rules, to make sure uh, the way we're using the software uh, the way the fuzzer will use the software is coherent with the, its interface. We also need it to be fast because we won't, we don't have, uh, we should not be, uh, we should not have to uh, spend uh, days uh, uh, 
uh, teaching the software how to use a given uh, program. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, we want some randomization features uh, as uh, we need to fuzz it. So we should not only play what we recorded. The software needs to learn more uh, from the recording, learn how to do more. And also, we want to be able to target specific parts of the application, which means, for example, if we uh, think we have more to look for uh, in a certain use case of a software, we need to be able to tell our tool to focus on this part. And finally, ideally, this tool would be cross-platform uh, to make sure uh, we are not limited in our studies and that as many experts can use it. So first of all, I'm going to explain to you how the recording of sequences work uh, when you record yourself using a given software. I'm going to talk then about how we represent the actions we are recording. Uh, then uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the scenarios, which are the way we set the rules uh, to tell our tool how to use our target software. Then about the editing work you have to do, uh, you can do to uh, be more accurate in your phasing. Then I'm going to talk about the events that uh, we use to simplify your work and how uh, the software, uh, the, the system will interpret them. And then about some transformations that are made uh, to ease your work and to add some more uh, phasing capabilities. So first of all, about the recording of sequences, it is very simple. Uh, with the software, you just have either to press a button or to press a short key. By default, by default uh, both control keys, quite unusual, um, to start or stop recording. From that, you will get a sequence of events, which is all uh, that the system sends us, uh, all the events the system generated from the data collected from the mouse and keyboard. Each of these events has its own uh, information, like the duration of uh, uh, the time to wait before the event executes. For keyboard events, the key that are used. For mouse events, sometimes the coordinates, sometimes the button used when it's a click, and the scroll amount. So now I'm going to show you uh, how the recording works. So here I'm just starting the software. So here, in this, in this case, I'm trying to first visualize to look. So what I'm going to do is first record myself uh, starting the application. So for that, I just type in a name uh, for the sequence to generate. And then I start the recording. So I'll choose to, to start it this way. And once, uh, once the system is start, the, the, to, the Visual Studio Code is started, I just press both control keys to, st to stop the recording. From that, uh, we've retrieved uh, comp the sequence of everything that happened. Now I'm just saving the file. And uh, to have a better co co code coverage, uh, you should record yourself uh, doing this in multiple different ways. So here, uh, uh, I'm going to record myself again, starting it in another way. Uh, this is to ensure that some, so some malware, for example, might trigger on different conditions by uh, starting uh, the software in different conditions, in different ways, I may reach those different conditions. Uh, now I'm going to show you what is the content of a given sequence. So here I've recorded a few sequences, and uh, here I'm loading a long sequence of uh, a complete use of the software. So this takes some time to load, but as you can see, many, uh, many different events, mostly mouse moves, which are infinitesimal uh, mouse movements. And this sequence uh, holds everything that happened when uh, we use the software. Um, from that, 
you've seen that there were uh, many different events and a lot of events that uh, were the, quite the same. So we created two classes, uh, two types of events. Let's say, for example, we want to model a simple mouse move, which means uh, a simple mouse click, which means we want to move the mouse to a certain place on the screen, uh, then press uh, a button. This is, from the system, what we get is uh, a very long sequence of, of mouse moves, uh, like moving from two pixels, uh, pixels by, almost pixel by, pixel by pixel, then a mouse press, and a mouse release on the same button. Uh, so. All of these little events are atomic events. We cannot split them. And this is concretely the information we gather from the system. On the other hand, we decided to uh, modelize that with what we call a synthetic event. This is just a merge representation of all these atomic events. And when we want to play it, to make sure the system understands, we need to develop it back into a sequence of atomic events. This has, this has two advantages. First of all, it's much easier for us to manipulate. And second, um, getting rid of some of uh, the, exact, the exact information of the mouse paths uh, allows us to add some variability. So for example, if we look at uh, the sequence we recorded earlier, we could synthesize it by grouping the, the key that we used to type and uh, the mouse moves. So here, I'm going to show you how to, uh, what the synthetic events look like, look like. So here, I'm just creating an empty sequence. And instead of making all the events one by one, I'm going to create just synthetic events that will represent complex sequences, but just in a few events. So here, for example, I add a mouse click. So it means going to click on uh, some specific place on the screen with some times and maybe multiple clicks. I can precise the duration uh, and the coordinates. So even uh, I can set random coordinates and also uh, set the, the mouse button to use. So this, is, this, this event is added to the sequence. I'm going also to add another event. Uh, so keyboard inputs means typing some text. So I have to type in the, the duration uh, before starting to type. And uh, then what I want to type. You could type, for example, a certain specific text, but it's not extremely useful for fuzzing, or except in some specific case. Uh, on the other hand, you could also add some random words to appear uh, like the goal is to make it look like a real user. So ideally, some random English words. OK, and also precise the typing speed. And now, this sequence uh, is ready to, you, to be played. Uh, now that, uh, let's suppose we made enough um, sequences. Uh, we've recorded enough data to play. We want to make scenarios, which are uh, uh, a set of rules to tell the system how to use the sequences. So for example, let's say I've made a recipe book for a given application. Uh, this means a lot of sequences uh, of different use cases. Uh, ideally, you would not record yourself using the entire software at once, as you would, you would have a, this would not be a good material to explain how to use the software. Instead, you uh, record yourself using uh, specific steps of the software. So for example, I have multiple starting sequence, ways to start the application, multiple uh, creating a new file, sequences, and so on. So now to explain how the, to explain our tool how to use the sequences, uh, we will make a scenario which is just a set of a sequence of regular expressions, which uh, will tell him, which will tell it how to choose the in between the sequences to make a valid scenario. So for example, uh, I'd say save uh, dot star means uh, I want you to choose a sequence which names begins with save. 
And then, at the moment of playing the scenario, the system will choose one sequence per expression and play them in the exact same order. So here, for example, I'm, I will make one of these scenarios. So to do that, I just have to insert the expressions. So for example, the first thing to do, of course, is to start Visual Studio Code in any possible way possible. So I will ma ma name it uh, start dot, dot star. Uh, dot, uh, it is uh, the language of Python regular expressions. So dot star means any character any number of times. So I just have to add a few sequences, for example, a, a few uh, expressions. As you do this, you will be able to see all the possible outcomes. Uh, for example, a valid use case for Visual Studio Code would be, well, first to start the application, then create a new file. Here in uh, this particular case, as you can see, I've, already, I've only made one sequence uh, name new file, so I don't need to put the dot star. Um, then uh, code something, and at the end, exit. So on the software, you will have, on the tool, you will have many information. Here you could see the, all the possible choices that uh, would uh, come out of this scenario. You can have also all the, the outcomes or only for a specific expression. And once this is done, I'm able to play the scenario. Uh, now, just a bit, uh, I'm going to talk a bit about the editing work you can do to uh, improve your sequences. Uh, first of all, let's say you have recorded some things, but you want to add more sequences. Uh, the first thing you, want to, you can do is just to add, as I've shown earlier, your own events, ideally uh, synthetic events, because they are much, much easier to handle. And once this is done, you can apply transformations. Transformations can be applied instantly to ease your work. Uh, let's say you want to, the whole sequence to, to last twice as long. You might, don't, you might not want to edit each event individually to do that. Instead, you can apply transformations to uh, change all the events at once. Once this is done, at the moment of playback, two steps will be, will be done. First of all, all the synthetic events that you use to easily manipulate and easily understand the sequences will have to be developed back into atomic events as this is what the system expects. And once this is done, we can apply some other transformations that we will, we will have scheduled. Uh, ideally, those transformations are random transformations. The idea is that each time you will play them, uh, the corresponding sequences, you will have a different outcome. So here, for example, I'm going to show you what a playback looks like. So here I'm playing the scenario that we made earlier. Here it's important to know that I'm not touching the keyboard and the mouse. So here, uh, the scenario, if you remembered, contained the expression start a new file, which also includes, I think, saving a file, and uh, code and exit. So here, it will choose one sequence corresponding to each case. So here it will, uh, I think it will save something. Yeah, it will save the file and then code something and then exit. As for uh, maybe you want to know about the complexity, this tool is uh, quite lightweight. Uh, you won't have any uh, complex operations. All the operations are on sequences of a relatively small sizes. So we've made it so all the operations are at worst linear, both in space and time. So uh, yeah, I'm finished typing. Here it tries to run the code. And once this is done, it should exit the application.
And once this is done, you will collect uh, the exact sequence of events that, that was played uh, to be able to replay it if you want to uh, repeat the experiment. Now I'm going to talk a bit about these synthetic events, as this is not, uh, this, these are some opportunities. Uh, developing them offers some opportunities. First of all, about the mouse click events, when you go to click on certain position on the mouse, uh, they develop back into the way they were before, which means uh, a sequence of mouse moves, infinitiv infinitesimal moves, then a mouse press and mouse release as many times as needed, if you want to do a double click or more. But uh, the path is not saved in the event, in the synthetic event, so we have to create it. And this is a good fuzzing opportunity. What we do is choose a random point on a discus uh, centered in the middle of the starting point and the ending point, and make a busy curve uh, from the three, a degree two busy curve from the three points, and this will be our mouse path. On the other hand, uh, for keyboard inputs, uh, we have to, you can type in uh, any kind of text your keyboard can type. Um, for that, we have to handle uh, many corner cases. Uh, uppercase cases are quite uh, simple to handle, much harder for uh, special character cases. And this will develop into a sequence of key presses and releases ordered in the right order uh, to make, to type the, the text you wanted it to type. Uh, now I'm going to talk a bit more about the transforms. So uh, the transformations are uh, just functions that take on an event and uh, returns zero or more events. Uh, the idea is to uh, apply this, you define this function, or you take a already, an already made transform, and this will transform an entire sequence. So the, the transformation can be applied, as I said, at two times, either at editing uh, to ease your work. Uh, so I do the example of uh, uh, lengthening the, the duration of uh, your sequence. There are much more. You can also, so that was a time dilation. You can also filter some events. For example, let's say you don't want any uh, keyboard press on a certain key. I don't know, because you don't have the key, for example. Uh, and on the other hand, uh, you can also apply a sequence at runtime. So the idea is that this is much more useful to do that for random, random transformations. Uh, for example, the time noise, uh, it's very useful in the case of a keyboard input. When you develop a keyboard input event into a sequence of mouse pre uh, keyboard press and keyboard releases, uh, the corresponding sequence will have, all the events will have the same duration, which is quite not human-like. So instead, you can schedule a time noise transform, uh, which will add some noise on the timestamps uh, to make them a bit random. And since this is applied at runtime, every time you play the sequence, we'll have a different outcome. You can also, for example, randomize slightly the mouse moves to make sure you don't click at the same time exactly at the same place. So here I'm going to show you uh, how to make those transforms. So here I've opened, it's the sequence that we defined earlier. I'm going to, first of all, uh, apply um, time dilation transformation. So the only thing I need is the dilation factor. But here, I don't really need it because we made a synthetic, ev a synthetic event sequence. That's very useful. On the other hand, uh, applying a time nose is always useful, especially when there is uh, keyboard input events. It, uh, there is here. And this is done. When we will play the sequence, this transformation will be applied and add some uh, random noise at the execution. So to conclude, we made this tool uh, to mimic the interactions with a given software of a normal user. It can generate most of this uh, kind of interactions. Um, the, our representation in sequences and scenarios 
uh, ensures that all the interaction it will generate are coherent with the interface of the software uh, to make sure we don't lose control and we keep uh, fuzzing the software as we want. It is quite uh, fast. We've, uh, here I ha only had to do uh, less than 10 recordings, and I was able to uh, run uh, some fast, uh, some simple uh, fuzzing. Um, the scenarios, the synthetic events and transformations uh, are all made to, and to offer you good fuzzing capabilities uh, to make sure to increase the code from coverage of the software you're testing above what you've recorded. Um, the scenarios are what allows you to target specific parts. Uh, if you record uh, sequences using specific parts of the software, you just have to uh, incorporate more scenarios using these sequences, or to make sure the scenario use these sequences the most. And uh, we've tested it on multiple environments, on multiple, for example, li uh, Linux distributions, and uh, it works uh, on those platforms. And you can download this tool. It's available on uh, this uh, Git repository. So uh, thank you for listening, and uh, I'm open to your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for the talk. Uh, do, do we have questions in the room? Uh, maybe, maybe a first question from, uh, from uh, my side. Uh, uh, did you implement strategies to measure and uh, optimize the coverage? Um, so this tool is uh, blind to the software it's testing, which means it doesn't know what it's really doing. Uh, so we don't have tools to, to, say, to measure the coverage, the actual, the actual coverage. Uh, you can only do that through uh, making sure your scenarios, in your editing and scenarios make, uh, have a good coverage. Okay, no. thank you. Uh, thank you very much yeah. for the presentation. Uh, my question is, uh, so the idea is to do some fuzzing, so uh, ideally you would need uh, an example where you're able to crash a program and you would be able to reproduce the crash consistently based on your parameters. So that's the first question. Did you, did you, do you have an example of, uh, of uh, such a crash? And the second question is, um, what is the granularity of the time, um, of the time events that you're doing? Because uh, if, you have, uh, if you, your crash is based on the, on the race condition, uh, you need to be able to control the, the parameters very precisely. So uh, we didn't uh, do this for uh, uh, debugging, for debugging software. Uh, instead, we do this for malware analysis. Our goal is to trigger malware, uh, sometimes viruses that, that hide into some uh, software. So, uh, no, we don't have example of uh, uh, generating crashes. But did you trigger the, the malwares consistently? And we uh, mostly focus on uh, goodware for, for now, uh, because we wanted to, gener to uh, measure the, um, what is a normal behavior for uh, um, uh, AI models, mm -hmm. and uh, about the time precision, uh, I've tested it. Uh, I've run multiple tests uh, on different sequences. Uh, we have, uh, we are at the system accuracy, uh, which means that, uh, for example, even at uh, very long sequences, we can reach uh, the time precision uh, on the order of a nanosecond. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other question in, uh, in the room? Okay, may maybe uh, one, last one for, for me. Um, but I guess I, I, I have uh, already the answer, but uh, do you have strategy uh, to minimize your data set? But as you mentioned, as you don't know what's going on in the, in the to program, to the, the data set, the vector that you input on your, uh, on your further. Uh, what, uh, what do you mean uh, to minimize? Uh the number of the recording, uh, you mean? Yeah, number of recording, number of the data, number of uh, vectors that you input in your in, in your further. Uh, well, uh, minimizing is done mainly by uh, the synthesis of events. Uh, on the other hand, you should not try to minimize it to make sure to 
increase your code coverage. The more recordings you do, the more you be, uh, you be you, the better the code coverage. Uh, yeah, but for, on the other hand, for given coverage, you would like to minimize the, n the data in, in yeah. input. But as you can, me you cannot measure the, the coverage. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. On the other hand, is it is a trade-off of uh, all the recording you will do and the transformation you will be able to apply. Uh, the randomness uh, in built in in the events you will manually add. Uh, so yeah, it is just a trade-off because between all those things. Okay, thank you very much. I, I guess we can uh, thank you again, uh, Vincent, for the presentation.